Let us start. Okay, so this is, this is the third image. Marriage a la mode, it's in the National Gallery and now you're wonky. Um, and it is a series of six paintings by Hogarth, 1743, somewhere around there. He probably didn't paint them all in, in that year, but you've got a, you know, you've got the sort of, um, the, the general gist, I forgot to turn comments off. I probably should turn off comments, otherwise I'll start reading them and get a bit distracted, even more distracted. Um, and this is the third. Um, so, you can see just a little bit that there are, well, you can see definitely that there are four figures. Um, let's just bring out, bring up um, Viscount Squander, make him a little bit bigger for you so you can see him. Look at him! He is looking as happy as Larry. He's very, very jolly, isn't he? Um, which is maybe because Viscountess Squanderfield is nowhere in sight in this painting. Um, so the story so far, very briefly, is that he has married this young lady. Um, it was an arranged marriage basically between two families. Um, her family had money, his family have a title, or have money and title, so money for a title. Um, we it's become very clear in the second series of the uh, of the of, of the uh, the works sorry the second painting in the series um that they are living separate lives and they're both equally debauched so so here we have this scene where he is looking marvelously happy yeah smiling from ear to ear which frankly we haven't seen him do before the last the last work very, very, very different story for him. That's quite surprising because he's actually in uh, a doctor's surgery. And I'm going to say that the rest of the assembled party, they're not smiling. None of them are finding anything very funny at all, um, which is kind of not surprising because Squanderfield is in this room connected to this issue. Do you remember the big black spot on his neck? It's all about that. So let's just have a quick look at him again. Um, this is probably not the easiest of images um, to, to show you piecemeal on a phone but you know what whoever went for the easy option okay so we see he's there looking very happy he's got something between his legs and then he's holding out something else in his hand and I'm gonna show you what that is he's holding this little pot of pills out in his hand and the pills are a very dark color sort of black pills um, so these are mercury pills as I said, we already know, we knew right from the start that he was suffering from syphilis and mercury pills were, um, were, were the, the, the treatment, basically. I was going to say cure, but treatment. So then he's got, as we saw, this other, um, this other pot of pills between his legs. Um, and also sort of between his legs is this young lady um, who if you can see right over on the right hand side of the image I hope you can see that um, she is also holding a little pill pot exactly the same so we've got either so maybe one of these is the lid or whatever but we've got essentially three identical pots of pills we know that they, uh, well, or at least one of them, so we can assume that the rest of them contain mercury tablets. So the assumption is, and because she's sort of, you know, half enveloped by him, you know, she is kind of positioned between his legs. So we can assume that this is an issue that um, the two of them uh, are going through together. Poor thing. Um, so but she, I mean, my God, she's she cuts a. She cuts a very sorry figure. Let's just have a quick look at this. Uh, a look at this young lady. You can see here. Look, she's uh, she's holding this uh, this pot of pills. 
Um, she's got, she's, she's very pale and wan. She's got her handkerchief up to her lips and maybe, maybe she's dabbing at a, a sore or something on her lip. It can start with the face as we know. Um, yeah, just odd clothes. They're kind of all a bit big for her, aren't they? So, you know, I, I think Hogarth does this brilliant thing at the, the subtle details, you know, it's always the little tiny things that tell us so much. It's not shouting, it's just like, yeah, okay, you know, why is she wearing clothes that are too grown up for her? What's the deal with the, the hanky? And so on. Okay, so they're there, it's clear that syphilis is rearing its ugly head. Um, there's another, well, there's two other, two other um, people in this image, two other characters in this play. Uh, so here is one of them. So she is to the left as we look at the image, so to the right of Squanderfield. Uh, so this rather blousy lady in the in the center of the um, of the of the painting, who is well. Okay, for a start, she's actually, <laughs> she's got a flick knife that she's, that she's playing with menacingly, yeah, maybe not that menacingly, I don't know. So I think she's kind of, to me, she's looking back at Squanderfield, um, A, kind of as though he's a complete idiot because you know, he's holding out these mercury pills, smiling at the doctor, you know, maybe as if to say, Doctor, these were great, you know, thanks so much for trying me on these mercury pills. However, they not, they're not really working for me. They're not really working for this young lady here. Um, so, you know, perhaps we could try something else. That's not possible. There was no other known cure or treatment for syphilis at this point in time. So she might be looking at him as though he's a complete idiot, frankly, with with good reason, um, but she might also be looking at him, I think, in horror, kind of a little bit of an exaggerated horror, perhaps, um, a little bit, um, a little bit overblown, maybe. And that's because potentially, and obviously we can read all sorts of things into these, into these images, but potentially, the argument goes that Squanderfield might, in his bluster, and you know, these pills don't work, have just said, you know, this young lady has given me syphilis. Not the other way around, she's given syphilis to me. I was a perfectly decent bloke until I took a very young girl as my mistress and she's given me syphilis. It could be the doctor, who we'll come on to in a minute, um, who is making this accusation. Anyway, whatever it is, she's reacting to something. So she could be telling him he's an idiot, but also I think there's something else and I think that she's, she's aghast at something. Um, so the question is, why would she care? Why would she care? Well, she cares for several reasons. The first of which is economical. Um, economic. It's not economic. They're all economical with the truth, but it's, it's an economic reason. Um, and that is that it's fairly obvious within this scenario that she is the young girl's madam. Um, the lady, she's kind of, she's, yeah, she has a sort of blousy look about her in, in general. I, that's maybe a bit wrong to say, but you know, the red and the black, there's something very clearly she's got these black spots as well um you know so she's she's also suffering from the disease i'm not sure that i know many ladies especially in that era who would have i don't know any ladies from that era at all not personally um but you know carrying a flick knife really mm, not sure but there's something else and i'm just going to pull her up a little bit um closer so you can maybe see a bit better can you see it's, it looks like paint damage which is unfortunate and the paint has been damaged but on her chest just above her left breast there there is it's actually a tattoo so it's like a sort of greeny bluey tattoo um and the figures we think unfortunately the paint has chipped away but we think they say um fc 
um, FC was something that was tattooed onto female convicts quite often. I think prostitutes um, stands for female convicts. So clearly at some point she's served time in prison for whatever activity, maybe you know, being a prostitute herself um, or being a, a madam, a procuress. Um, and uh, yeah, and and she's been tattooed. So it's it's unambiguous. Let's say that. But you know, maybe her reaction is just a little bit too much. Maybe her reaction is just a little bit too much. Um, and that might be because well, there's, there's two things that kind of make this whole scenario even worse. Then it might be because there's a suggestion that you know if she um, she's uh, I'll put my teeth in. Uh, so Viscount Squander or Squanderfield or the Doctor have accused the young girl of giving her of giving him syphilis, perhaps. And if that is the case, that meant that she he, he was not her first lover, um, or she had congenital syphilis. But I think this is kind of different. Um, and so the suggestion is reading between the lines that she has been sold to Squanderfield as a virgin which means that obviously he would pay a lot more money um, and and you know and kind of it's been found that she's not or she wasn't a virgin um, so that's that's the that's one suggestion as why this lady is looking a, a little bit aghast I mean as I said you can read all sorts of things in but you you just know that it's all it's all lies and skullduggery and and very it's all it's all a bit low rent isn't it all a bit low rent um, okay the worst thing of all I just want to show you a comparison the lady and the girl can you notice something um, that crops up in both of these images. The material, just look at the material on the lady's sleeve and look at the material on the girl's dress. I think that the girl might be wearing her mother's clothes. I think that probably the lady is the young girl's mother and she has sold her into prostitution. She's probably pretended to sell her virginity goodness knows how many times oh it's dark isn't it it's dark so it's these subtle subtle details that as I said Hogarth does so well the sleeve the dress great so in this terrible scene let's just look at it overall again in this terrible scene of as I said, lies and debauchery and skullduggery and disease and illicit sex and all sorts of terrible things. Is the doctor the, the, the moral pillar? Is he the, you know, is he the man that we're turning to for moral guidance? Is he the one who's going to put it all right? You know, gently lets Viscount Squanderfield down. The, you know, the mercury pills are the best he can do. Hmm, let's just take a look at him. Is he heck? I mean, look at the state of that. Look at the state of that, quite apart from the fact that he looks as though he has been drinking, I don't know, the 18th century equivalent of a special brew for about 40 years. Um, he's also showing signs of actually congenital syphilis. Um, the bulging forehead the look, just look at his nose and look at the bridge of his nose it's kind of collapsed um so it's it's he has, has an odd shaped face it looks as though he hasn't got any teeth perhaps and his legs his legs are a, a very big giveaway if you're if you're looking for syphilis which i always am as we know <laughs> apparently i don't know where the obsession has come from slightly worrying um yeah so we, you know he is he's he's not the most reputable i don't think um and if we didn't get that from his person as ever 
with Hogarth, the room is almost like another protagonist in the whole story. So just take a look at the room. Well, I'm going to show you one specific thing in the room um, to begin with, and that is this. Uh, this is the cupboard behind, or the wardrobe basically, behind Viscount Squanderfield. He's sort of unwittingly pointing to it with his cane, which I think is a, is a marvellous detail. You know, he's got his cane flung over his shoulder um, and he's, he's pointing to this trio. <laughs> I mean, would you want to go and get treated by a doctor who has <laughs> A wardrobe in which a skeleton is basically molesting an anatomical figure. <laughs> I mean, look at him. So the skeleton's like, hi, and look at the look on the figure's face. He's like, oh my god, not again. Um, you know, the skeleton's hand is like right down by his groin um, and there's one leg wrapped around his. Um, and then you've got this weird mask with a wig on, on sort of a broomstick. I don't even know what what that is um who's looking on rather looking like it's rather marvelous to be honest quite enjoying the the poor anatomical figure's discomfort um so a very lovely humorous allusion to illicit sex i mean if, if that isn't an allusion to illicit sex and death then i don't know what is the thing is is that it's all happening if i pull up the um the whole image look it's all happening behind squanderfield's back um so it's like okay so is this a reference to his wife who we met in the last painting or is this a reference to the the shenanigans of the young lady um who frankly oh my god it's just, she's she's not old enough to know better is she um i'm sure we're just looking at the state of her she's not very happy anyway um you know or is this oh, yeah who knows but it's something so this is kind of it is to do with him but the there's also stuff you know that that isn't to do with him um so i think uh, i think that's that's quite clever there are other things in the room as well just over to the left hand of the painting just next to the dodgy doctor who's called by the way dr la pilule i forgot to tell you that the dr pill <laughs> dr pill yeah um there's a skull but look again at the skull none of these signs are good the skull has got um like black it looks like black marks but actually it's probably been eroded away and that once again syphilis um and then on top of the wardrobe with the the dodgy trio you've got this lovely weird head kind of reminds me of the medusa in the first painting that's over on the uh the to the the left as you look at the painting um the sort of head that is looking out over the the um over the proceedings in the national gallery description of this work um it says that this could possibly be um an apothecary apothecary sign uh, it looks like he's got a bone going through his head but actually if you look more closely it doesn't the bone is on the wall behind him but oh, again that's clear I love Hogarth. Um, so if it was an apothecary sign, then maybe this is a suggestion that the good doctor also works as a chemist or, you know, used to advertise as a, as a, as a chemist. Um, I'm wondering why the sign isn't outside anymore. You know, does he just have so many customers that he doesn't need to advertise? Maybe, oh, maybe he is a little bit under the radar. I think that might be more, maybe he's been struck off and he's not allowed to practice anymore and so everything's had to come inside. That, that to me would be the more probable answer. Well, whatever, he he's, keeps himself busy because um, on the other side of the room there is a very strange contraption. Um, luckily for us, Hogarth has also included a book that you can read and it is an explanation of 
devices. So this one, so this is, these are devices that the doctor has invented. So he's a doctor, he is, there's evidence that he was also a barber surgeon. There's a, there's a um, bowl on top of the wardrobe as well. Um, so, you know, when you say something, you're like, oh, that's a whole tangent. Never mind. So barbers actually, because they were the most skilled with knives back in the day, um, also, I was going to say moonlighted, but they also worked as surgeons as well quite often. It's a whole other subject, isn't it? Um, so anyway, so he th these are his inventions. Um, and this contraption that we can see here um, is to um, set, set sh soldiers, set shoulders. So um, I'm, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, and then he's, he has another contraption. Actually, if I, if I show you, uh, maybe in the, um, in the, in the main image, there's sort of a set of pulleys that you can, couldn't really see above that, uh, the, the shoulder, the shoulder setter, shoulder setter. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Uh, and then his other invention, we can see where his, um, interests lie is a bottle opener so or well, not a bottle opener a, a a corkscrew he's he's on it isn't he he's he's on it our man of many talents but okay so we we know he's really dodgy what is he about to do now let's just go back to his image um yeah there he is and look at what he's up to it's actually polishing his glasses which suggests that he's about to put them on to look at something. Just think about the title of this painting. The title is The Inspection. So he is about to inspect. Um, all eyes, I think, are on the girl, the poor young girl, um, who very, very unsurprisingly is not looking very happy at all about any of this and rightly so so my god you know we were wondering what the earl of squander was up to whilst his wife was having um a great time apparently in his home with somebody else um and now i think we might have an answer yeah not a great answer but an answer nonetheless so they're all at it syphilis is rife doctors are dodgy this is the kind of world that he is mixed up in what's going to happen next tune in next week for the next exciting installment of hogarth's marriage a la mode and i'm going to turn on commenting um so hello steph if you're still here um yeah, there we go. I mean, ugh. the detail, the detail. There are more details in that painting as well. There's, it's just, it's, it's horrific, really, isn't it? This is how Hogarth saw society, and this is how I guess some, um, some. My God, hello, Alan. Um, how some people conducted themselves. I mean, obviously, it's a bit exaggerated. One would hope, but yeah not great thanks for the daily dose of debauchery lavinia you are very welcome you are very welcome daily doses of debauchery are beyond the palate and who knew stds could be so much fun well not me that's for sure you know my my <laughs> my obsession with syphilis is quite worrying but it's rife i like in paintings in the in the kind of I was going to say nonsense is not nonsense. And the kind of paintings I love, which again says something about me, doesn't it? That's terrible. Anyway, um, it will be on my blog if you want to revisit the debauchery. Um, in the meantime, we will, yes, well, I will be um, honing my talk for next week, for next week's instalment. Um, so, yep, yeah, have a look at the blog. Um, and have a lovely day, everybody. Um, try not to melt. 
And uh, if anyone wants to do no work and just have a really good read, then the fourth monkey, what's it called? The fourth monkey, it's the Monkey Killer series by J.D. Barker. Um, is fantastic. So the fourth monkey killer, the fifth to die, and then the sixth child or something. I can't remember what it's called, but it's <laughs> very good books have prevented me from doing lots of work throughout this week. And let's hope next week is better. Lovely, lovely to see you all and um, have a great day. I will put this up on to um, onto my Instagram post and Facebook and it's on my website and on YouTube as well if you've if you've missed it. So See you next week at 11. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.